First thing I'm going to do is create a new program. I'll just name it loop. And I'm going to explain to you why, uh, basically, the benefits of using a for loop. Um, basically, right now, if you're using a, uh, a while loop and you want it to end at a specific point, such as if you're having a counter, uh, something count up, you have to have an if statement and you have to have a counter variable. So by that I mean, um, I'll show you real quick. So clear home, set x to 0, that's just the variable I want to use. I'll do uh, an infinite loop, and in that loop I'll have x increased by 1, display x just so you can see that something's actually happening within the loop, um, and then if x equals 50, then go to label 2, and end that loop, create my label, and then display end. Okay, so basically in this loop, it counts up to 50, once it reaches 50, jumps into the loop, going to the label. Pretty basic stuff. Um, of course, you can shorten this while loop uh, by using, by changing the while statement. You could say while x is less than 50, count and then you can, it eliminates the need to have this f if x equals 50 and then you also don't need to have this label but you still have to have this x plus 1 in here so what if you want to eliminate that part of code well then you can use oh please tell me it's in freeze well my program just froze so um okay so you saw that loop before and i'm going to show you the, basically the benefits now of using a uh, a for loop okay so you know how we had to store x before well we don't need to do that anymore uh... while using a for loop the for basically has all the components of that while loop that we created all built into the to the function so the proper syntax for a for loop which is located in the first column down on the row four is you're going to input the variable you want to use so we're going to use x and you don't have to set it before this it automatically sets it when you when it starts the loop um, x and then you're going to input the starting value you want so I'm going to use 0 like I'm storing x to 0 the ending value you want and the increment so I could be using I could increment up by ones each loop I could do two I could do whatever uh, but it will go up until it reaches 50 okay so now in this I can just display x because the for loop will count for me and the loop and then display end so now Assuming I coded that right, we can run that loop, it will count up to 50, and then display end. So you can see that is much shorter code than the original program we created. So this, I mean, this can be used a lot if you're wanting to, you don't want to use that counter variable, you want to optimize your code. It, it has a ton of different uses. If you want to have something move around on the screen, you can use the for loop. Um, yeah. So now I'll briefly explain the get key function. I believe there are a couple different ways to use this, but the way I've been taught is um, using it within a loop and storing it to a key. So let's see here. We're going to go get key, store to Z. The get key is in the second column in row 7. Um, basically what this is doing is it's saying get a key, so it's waiting for a key input, and then whatever that key input is, it's going to store that value to Z. Um, if there's no key input, the Z value will be zero. So keep that in mind. If uh, if no key is pressed, the value will be zero. Um, and I'm going to do display Z. Um, and I'll go back and show you kind of a problem with this code right here. Um, but this will work for the time being. Run this. Oops. My bad. Uh, not with it today. Uh, I put it in quotes. I don't know why I did. So we're going to display the value of Z, not Z. Sorry about that. Run that. So it's displaying 0. Um, and maybe you don't want it to display when it's when it, a key isn't pressed. But if I press a key, if I press 5, you can kind of see it flash um, in. But it's hard to see. So if we want it to only do that when a key is pressed, then we can go if Z does not equal 0. Again, because z equals 0 when a key isn't pressed then display z and then end that if statement so if I rerun this you can see those zeros are not showing up if I press a key, if I press the second key 21 comes up, if I press alpha 31, if I press enter 105 but now you might think to yourself how is it getting those values or how do I know what key is what value if I'm trying to wait for a certain input within a program 
Well, it's pretty simple. Um, the the keys are organized by uh, by rows. So the first key being the Y equals key is one, row one, button one. Window key is row one, button two. So the values are one one, one two, one three, all the way across. Second key, same thing. Two one, two two, two three, two four, two five, two six, all the way down to ten. So it's one oh one. 102, 103, 104, 105, 105 being the enter key. So again, you can use this. Um, it's very useful if you don't want to have just a single input because when you do an input or prompt function, it only you either have to loop that, but and you can't have other stuff going on while that happens. So this is you can do other stuff within the loop while it's still you know waiting for an input from the user. It does require a bit more coding than in you know an input function but it gives you a lot more freedom so I'll kinda show you one cool thing you can do with this um, and that's movement and I'm gonna code it first with the pro you know a couple issues and then show you how to fix those just so you can understand my whole thought process alright so you gotta remember the output function is organized by um, its the y value first and then the x value not like a normal graph you would do in school um, it's 8 down and 16 across so if we want to start our guy in the middle I'm gonna set 8 is 4 and 8 to B uh, that way when we output at a B it's directly in the middle 4 down 8 across so I'll have my infinite loop while one loop and we're going to get key sort of that to Z you could sort that to any variable you want not just Z but I use Z um, and we're gonna do uh, I'll just do this briefly. If a equals, or no, sorry. If z equals 34, which is the down arrow, one, two, three down, one, two, three, four across, then a plus one store to a. So basically, if you're pressing the down arrow, you're wanting the guy to move down the screen. So if you're at, if you're at four down, you want to move down one that you're going to increase by one. It sounds kind of backwards, but that's just how the calculator functions. So you're going to move down to, you know, five. Um, if I want to move up, I'm going to do the opposite. If z equals 25, which is, you know, up arrow, a minus one, sort of a. And you do the same exact thing for the b value. Uh, you're going to do if, you know, z equals 26 and if z equals 24. And I'm just not going to do that right now just to save some time. Then we're going to output. You always want to output after these if statements so that the movement is properly displayed. And I'll kind of show you why after I show you the issue you have with this program. So now, you know, this code looks all fine and dandy. You run this. You've got, I've got my, my guy kind of there sitting in the middle of the screen. If I press the up arrow, he moves up. But look, you know, you can see where I was previously. It's not clearing the screen. So that's one problem you have with it. So you want to get rid of that. So now before this movement, you're going to want to do it here because it will display in the past position, not the new position after you input a key. Um, if you do it afterwards, it's not going to clear it properly, but that's beside the point. Um, we're going to do an if statement. So if z does not equal 0, meaning a key is pressed, because we don't want it to happen every time, because then your guy would constantly be flashing, and it, it doesn't look very good. So we're going to do if z doesn't equal 0, then output a comma b and then a space you could use a clear home but then if you've got other stuff on the screen all of that will clear as well and then will have to be redisplayed so as if you do this it only displays on your position so it makes the program look better and it functions better as well so if I do that run the code uh, then when I move up and down you know there's no trail now the other problem we have with this code is the domain for the y uh, y values are 1 through 8. So what if I try to move up to 0? Well, I get a domain error. Duh. Um, now to fix that, you're just going to add a, a statement to this within you know the if statement. So you're going to do on if z equals 34, which is the down arrow, and a does not equal 8. So meaning, as long as the y value is 1 through 7, I can m I'm allowed to move down. But as long if I'm at the maximum value of 8, I'm not allowed to move down. Um, I'm going to do the same thing um, for moving up. So if z equals 25 and a does not equal 1, so, you know, again, as long as I'm within 2 through 8, I'm allowed to move up, then I won't get that domain error. And you're going to have to do the same thing for those b values again when you're moving right and left.